Chevrolet has always been about high performance cars, and in 1966, they came out with the new for 66 Mark IV big block V8 engine. And you could get it all the way up to a 427 cubic inch version. And there were several flavors of horsepower of that 427, but this 66 Impala Supersport has the hot one. We feature a lot of very cool cars here in Muscle Car of the Week, and I'm a really big fan of this week's car. It's a 1966 Chevrolet Impala Supersport, but it has the very rare engine option uh, offered for the first time in 1966 called the L72 427. For 1966, Chevrolet's 427 engine was a new offering, and you could get this in the Corvette, and you could also get it in the full-size Chevrolets, so the Bel Air, the Biscayne, uh, the Impala like we have here. And there was a couple different 427s that were available. One was a 390 horsepower version, and this one is the most powerful that you could buy, called the L72. And the mechanicals of the engine were special because it had a higher compression ratio, 11 to 1 compression. It had a special solid lifter camshaft, uh, with a different lift and duration. It had special exhaust manifolds. Um, it had a special Holley carburetor. So everything about this was designed to really get things moving. At first glance, you would think that this Impala would be hard to get moving because it's so big. It's very long, it's very wide, it seats a lot of people comfortably. But in all reality, it's not that heavy. Uh, Chevrolet rated this at 3,865 pounds. So we do see later muscle cars that got heavier than this thing that were much smaller. So that 427 with a 3,800 pound car meant that you had something that would perform really well on the street. This particular one is coupled to a four-speed manual transmission, which makes it even more fun. And the original owner ordered the close ratio trans and the, uh, the standard issue 3.3 to 1 rear gear ratio, which meant, again, this car was a lot of fun to drive and um, was probably pretty quick. Uh, at the time, the magazines were saying that these things ran mid-14 second quarter miles with the stock tires. Of course, if you prep this car to go drag racing and put different tires on it, um, it would definitely go faster. We saw some stuff saying they ran mid-13 second quarter miles. But the speed is just half the story on this car. It is a comfortable cruiser. It's designed to go down the road you know, with comfort and style. And one of the things that we like about it is the marina blue color. Uh, it's just beautiful on this car. It shows off the lines really nicely. And this car is wearing some of its original paint. It's had one repaint on the outside, but the door jams and, and under the trunk lid and all that stuff is still the original paint. It's pretty cool. The interior is all original, and it's a, a white color called parchment. Uh, it's very stark white when you look at it. And it wasn't super popular back in the day, but it's cool to see that this one has survived. Inside it has a couple other details that are worth noting. The console gauges, normally they came with the battery power ammeter and then oil pressure and temperature. And this one has been upgraded with a clock. It's one of the few options on the car. Uh, in the dash, in front of the driver, you have the high RPM tachometer and the rest of the standard gauge package. So, you know, the bucket seats and the console and the four speed all kind of make this sporty on the inside. The back seat is enormous. You know, you can fit a whole bunch of friends back there. And we see one more of the options this car came with, which is a rear seat speaker, which goes along with the optional push button AM radio. But really, there's not a whole lot of options on the car just what you need to go down the road and have a good time doing it. There's no doubt about it, this car is gigantic, but it's still a really good looking car, and I think part of the reason for that is the aggressively sloped rear window. I'm sure it helped aerodynamics, but it really made this one of the best looking cars of the 60s. This is a pretty rare car, but we don't know how many L72 Impala four speeds were built. We do know that there were somewhere around 1,700, 1,750 L72 427 cars built, but that includes the Bel Air, the Biscayne, the Wagon, the Impala. Within those, the breakdowns per specific model isn't really known. 
The one thing is interesting is that you could get a Caprice in 1966, and apparently there's at least one L72 Caprice known to be out there. But in this case, the owner went down to Kleinfelder Chevrolet in Jonestown, Pennsylvania, and plunked down just over four grand uh, to take home this 1966 Impala Supersport. Uh, Kleinfelter Chevrolet only closed recently, from what we can tell. Um, and when he bought this car, uh, he traded in something else. I don't know what he traded in, but he got about 850 bucks for it. And just 200 more dollars down, sent him on his way to ownership of this beautiful Marina Blue 66 Impala Supersport. Big, fast, and comfortable, much like myself. This is one of my favorites we featured. You can see more of this car on our website at musclecaroftheweek.com. And don't forget to share it with your friends on Facebook and uh, check out our YouTube channel where you can always be updated on the latest episode of Muscle Car of the Week. Thank <laughs> you.